Well, I've got to get a train to work, but join today as I give you advice on which five board games you can play while riding on a train. At least the era of working from home seems to be completely over, which means every single day I am riding on a train to work. It takes me about an hour and a half to get in, but this is ample time to play many board games. The problem is I'm on my own, which means I've got to think of solo games I can play within restraints of a train. Now, if you know British trains, you are quite lucky often to get a table, which presents table-based opportunities. Now I know what you're thinking, why not I just use a phone or a tablet or play on my Nintendo Switch? Well the thing is, I've spent all day staring at screens, so it's going to be quite nice to get a bit of a screen break. So, while I'm here, let's talk about five board games I can play while riding on a train on my own. Now when it comes to board games with creative use of cards, one company is known above all others, and that is Button Shy. They can turn 18 cards into all sorts of games that you can play on your journey into the train. So I recommend playing either Rove or Food Chain Island. Both of these obviously are 18 cards and they take up a really small amount of table space. But in that, they can both be played one player and they're really, really challenging. Now, do you remember when in the 80s and 90s people used to have those big broadsheet newspapers and they sit on a train and take all that space? Well, now you can be just as annoying as them by playing the game Mayscape. Now, in this game, you have your own little map. You have to solve your own little puzzle by walking around the maze. It starts off quite simple, but then as you unfold the pages, the map expands and you have to work out your way through the route as it evolves by turning the pages. It's a fun little brain teaser from Xavier and each box contains seven different maps. I don't worry once you've finished all of those because in the rule book there's a whole host of different things you can also look for when you're playing this. So uh, get your head down and start solving some puzzles. Now if you thought the idea of playing Gloomhaven on a train was quite frankly ridiculous, you've obviously never heard of the game Gloomholding. Now this is an 18 card game version of Gloomhaven that you can play entirely in your hand. Or you can use a table if you want to. Designed by Joe Kipfrail, what starts off as a print and pay fan project earned the approval of the original publisher. This allowed them to use the art and graphics from Gloomhaven. All the things you love about Gloomhaven are here, so you've got dungeon crawling, you've got character development, you've got items and you've even got a campaign to play through. Using its own campaign book, you actually go on an adventure in the Gloomhaven world and that's a unique adventure you can only find in Gloomholding. Don't worry if creating print and play games aren't your thing because the original developer for Gloomhaven was so impressed with Gloom Holding they've actually made it an official product. So coming up soon is Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs which you'll be able to buy without any need for printing the game yourself. Buttons and Bugs is an original story with deep strategic combat you know from Gloomhaven. In this game you'll want to be hero shrunk down to the size of a mouse. You'll be navigating through treacherous terrain and fighting monsters in an attempt to return to your original size. The developer promises you can actually play it on a plane, and each scenario will take you no more than 20 minutes. Do you know what commuters love? Commuters love the clattering sound of dice when they're on their journeys, which is why roll and bike games are so good to be playing when you're on the train. And that's why I'm picking my city, Roll and Build. It feels like a whole big box game, but it's reduced down to a tiny, tiny box, which you can play by rolling dice. I know I said at the start of the video that I wanted to play games that didn't involve a screen, but I'm going to make a bit of an exception here because I really recommend the Unlock games. Now these are designed to be played within 60 minutes, which is often linked on a normal train journey. If you have a table to hand, you can play these relatively easily because all you're actually doing is drawing cards and then acting on those cards. You're often going to be scanning each of these cards with the app and that's going to tell you which cards you need to draw from your deck. But they're quite a good way of fitting in a very quick sort of hour long adventure and there's such a big selection of them available that depending on which taste you have, there's probably going to be an unlock game for you. If you don't really like the unlock games, you can also play the uh, kind of exit games from Cosmos which do a kind of similar thing. However, they often take up sometimes more table space and of course you can only play them once. So either unlock or exit, uh, whichever one you prefer, it's often a good bet for a bit of a train based board game fun. 
and that's been five games and a few extras that I like to play when I'm riding on a train. But do let me know in the comments down below what games you like to play, when, maybe when you're on a train or when you're riding on a plane. And if any of these games have caught your eye, many can be purchased from your friendly local game store. And for us in the southeast of England, our friendly local game store is Chaos Cards. But don't worry if you're not in the southeast of England because you can also shop at Chaos Cards by using their fantastic website. And if you look in the description down below, you'll see a little discount code that you can use to make your first purchase there even cheaper. Don't worry if you've been there before, you can still use that code and get a little bit of money off. But um, thanks as always for watching and uh, I'm going to get on a train. <laughs>